So topic five is all about electric currents. So I'm going to show you a few of the uh, equations here and uh, hopefully help you out as well. So this very first equation, this is a very important one and yet most people don't really use it. If you recognize this half mv squared, that is a kinetic energy. So that's E with a little subscript K. So that tells you the kinetic energy of something. So again, m is your mass in kilograms, v is your speed or velocity, which is in meters per second. But what this means, this represents the kinetic energy of a charged particle that's been accelerated across a potential difference. Now, a lot of people call this a voltage, but in the IB, they always use the word potential difference. So that's this capital V here. So capital V, that's the potential difference. We often write it as PD for short, and it's measured in volts. Whereas E is just the charge of an electron. Well, E is the charge of whatever you're looking at. So if you just want just an electron, then it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, how did I know that value? I can always go and check. Right, I can just go up to uh, one of the initial pages here in your data booklet and take a look. Hey, look at that, the elementary charge. Charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, if ever you want to know about an electron volt, because that's a unit of energy that uh, comes up fairly often. So if I go back here, the trick to knowing how to deal with an electron volt is, well, just multiply E times one volt. That's what one electron volt is. It's the uh, kinetic energy given to an electron that's been accelerated across a potential difference of one volt. So that means one EV is just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, but then it's joules because it's a unit of energy. So that's how we can deal with this. This one here comes in quite handy, I think. Now I, I is just the current. So that's the current in uh, some circuit. And current is measured in, well, amperes. But you can see that, well, Q, you better know about that, Q is just the charge. In other words, Q is the same sort of measure as E. It's a charge, and it's measured in coulombs. Now T, of course, is just the time. So that's measured in seconds. So what this really means is that the current is just measuring the coulombs per second. So that's why that's an alternate unit of current. It could be amperes or it could be coulombs per second. That's also a unit of current. Now R, R is a resistance. So resistance is measured in a unit called ohms. So it's a Greek capital omega it's called this right here it looks like a horseshoe some students call it so this tells you basically how the resistance and the potential difference and the current are related this one right here is often known as ohm's law yeah, that's what a lot of people call it um, so maybe we can just put a little circle around that and say that is ohm's law but a lot of people learn ohm's law not in this form right here but instead as V equals I R. Now, do you have to memorize that? No, it's the same thing as this equation. Just solve for V by itself. See that if you get V on its own, you have to multiply both sides by the I, so that's why you get an I R over here. So that's the resistance in a circuit. So those are the three main things uh, you need to learn about in a circuit is voltage, which is what a lot of people call it, but it's really a potential difference. That's measured in volts. Then you have the current, which is measured in amperes, and you have the resistance, which is measured in ohms. Now, what is this one useful for? This is just a wire. So if you're actually looking at some sort of wire, well, then you can actually talk about some more specific things. So um, R is still the resistance, but this time rho is a property. So this is a Greek lowercase r here. So this is rho. And this is the resistivity. That's the resistivity. And I'm going to tell you about the units in a second here. Now L, that's the length of the wire. So that length will be measured in meters. And A is the cross-sectional area of this wire. 
what this means is that if we took some sort of wire, so let's say this is like a little tube right here, so I'm just trying to draw a three-dimensional uh, wire here. If we looked at this right here, well, this right here would be the length here. That would be the length of the wire. And if we took the cross-sectional area, in other words, the area of this circle here, that would be A. So that would be the cross-sectional area, and that's measured in meters squared. So if it's a circle like this, which most wires are, then this would be just pi r squared, where r is the radius of this wire. So that would be the area right here, that's A. Now if we want the resistivity then, how can we actually find the units? Well, if you look at this, imagine getting resistivity on its own. So in other words, I just want to solve for it on its own here. So I'm just going to do it off to the side. So I have r equals rho L over A. I want to get resistivity by itself, so I have to put the A on top, so that's going to be R A, and I have to divide by L. That's what rho is going to be measured in. Now, as far as the units go, I'm going to put little square brackets to denote just the units here. So I'm just putting square brackets just to tell me about the units here. So these are ohms, that's what resistance is measured in, and the cross-sectional area is in meters squared, and L is in meters. So this meter here would cancel out that one, so I would end up with ohm meters. So that's how I can know that the units for resistivity are in ohm times meter. So this is a property of wires. Now we've got this one over here. This is all about power. Okay, so these right here, these denote, these are the equations for power. So if we talk about uh, in a wire, maybe we say how much power is dissipated? Well, that's what we're talking about here. This is the power. That's this. So we have P, which is power, and that's measured in watts. But it's also measured in joules per second. Do you remember earlier I showed you this equation I said is worth memorizing? I think it was this one right here. Yeah, from topic two. So power is energy over time. So it's normally measured in watts, but it's also measured in joules per second. So that's the same unit that goes right here. So this is also in joules per second. And it turns out the power is equal to the potential difference times the current. Um, and then what you can do then is you can actually replace for V using V equals IR here, and then you'll get I squared R, or you can replace for I, where I is going to be, what's that, V over R. So that means you're going to have V times V over R, so that gives you V squared over R. The whole point here is that if you're given two of these, either potential difference or current or resistance, as long as you know two of the three, you can figure out the power. So that's usually not such a big deal, and that's actually pretty straightforward. So power is measured in watts or joules per second. This one, however, is really important. That one is all about, uh, well, I suppose I should maybe delete that and make it black like I've been circling the other things here. So if I look at this one right here, this is all about internal resistance. So if we have uh, a wire, but this time it has an internal resistance, then we're going to have something here called this, this letter right here. This, uh, I think it's called epsilon. This one right here, this little curly E, that actually represents something. So see, what you can do is you can have a circuit where you actually consider that the battery itself has its own internal resistance. So if we do that, if we consider a battery with its own internal resistance, then we can actually consider sort of what the battery's trying to do, so to speak. So in this case right here, um, this right here, this funny looking E here, is actually called the EMF, which stands for the electromotive force. You might think it's measured in newtons, but it's not. It's measured in volts. That's because it's a measure of potential difference. Now I, that's still the current. R is still the resistance. And little r, that's the internal resistance. So this would be the, like the, the little resistance in the battery. Because the battery itself has its own resistance, it turns out. Oops, this almost looks like interned. Uh, I made those a little bit too close here. So if we look at this, then this is the internal resistance. And that, of course, will be measured in ohms. So what we're looking at is a situation where, maybe I'll do this a little bit lower here, and maybe I'll do it in green.
So let's say we have a circuit. Now normally we would have a circuit, let's say this is a resistor here, and this resistor will have a resistance R. And normally we would just draw a battery here, but now we're actually going to consider a realistic battery, which means we have the battery sort of trying to put out something, and it's got its own little resistance here. It's got its own little mini resistor R, and this right here, that's like what the battery's trying to put out. It's like this EMF here. So this, this is like what the battery's trying to do, and then you can actually calculate what it really does. What I find useful with this equation is to take this EMF equation and then say, well, that's equal to I times R plus R. I showed you this in the uh, classroom video, so here I can just multiply these. So I'll say IR plus I times little r. And what I like to do is actually get big I, big R on its own. So I solve for this, which means it's going to be the EMF minus IR. This is like the terminal potential difference. So this is in volts. This right here is like what the battery is trying to do. So that's the EMF, also measured in volts. And this right here, it's like the, it's almost like this is what it's losing. It's like the lost voltage. Well, I hesitate to use the word of voltage. I should say potential difference. But it's basically like the, the battery is trying to put out, let's say, six volts, and maybe there's one volt lost, so it really acts like a one, uh, like a five volt battery in that case. So although I like this form right here, what I prefer to do is to expand it and then write it like this. This seems to make more sense with students. Either way, that's how we deal with these. Then, last but certainly not least, we have these two equations. They help us for circuits. So how do they help us? Well, they tell us about equivalent resistances. So this one right here, um, let me see here, maybe I'll put it in black here. So this first one right here, this is just for series circuits. So you have a circuit where you have, let's say, two resistors, one after the other, and this is how it works. Whereas if you have a parallel circuit, then this is the equivalent resistance here. This is for parallel resistors. So what we do then, we take a look in a, in a circuit if it's in series or if it's in parallel. In other words, you know, if the resistors go one after the other and the, uh, the current doesn't have any choice of where it goes, or if we have a parallel circuit where it does have a choice, then we can figure out and replace basically all the resistors with just one equivalent resistance here, some, some you know, big R here. It would be the equivalent of if I had, let's say, instead of just this one R, let's say I had like three or four more of them all lined up like this right here. Well, I could rewrite it as one resistor. In other words, the battery is going to behave as if there's one resistor that's equal to just the sum of the resistances of all these ones over here. That's how it'll work. Whereas if it was in parallel, it would behave like this. So that's how we deal with things from topic uh, five, which is electric currents.